Tamindu Poetry uh, to me is impression, expression of what I witness and see and hear in my life. In that sense, poetry is a kind of a healing process uh, of everything that happens in my life and also with uh, Tibet and uh, Tibetan people as a Tibetans as a people and also Tibet as a nation. So that's uh, poetry and what poetry means to me an expression of. Uh, our ex collective experiences and my own personal experience as well. Poetry, for me, uh, to my understanding, uh, it's just an expression of feelings, uh, of those special feelings that you experience uh, throughout your life or like during certain times when certain things really uh, inspired you or like affect you in a special way. So it's a, a you know, kind of uh, um, um, expression of uh, words melodiously and uh, with uh, rhythm and, uh, mm, and some messages. So when I uh, constantly think about what poetry means to me, um, I've come to realize that uh, there's no definite answer to it. I think at this point of time in my life, uh, I am in the phase of exploring poetry uh, because uh, it is when I write poems, I feel I'm able to, you know, kind of articulate my ideas, my imagination, my thought processes and the creative energies um, to be formed into words. So yes, I think I'm currently exploring poetry and uh, I do not really have a definite answer as to what poetry means to me. So poetry, um, in my opinion, uh, there are different ways of writing poems by different pe pe uh, people with different emotions. Uh, for me, I don't have uh, uh, time or situation to write uh, about uh, flowers and uh, you know uh, your love or other stuff like that. Uh, I'm preoccupied by uh, the suffering and the and the occupation of our our nation Tibet. And uh, every time I want to write something, uh, those things comes uh, comes in my mind, and so I start to write uh, uh, things. Poetry for me has always been um, a way to express the innermost thoughts and feelings that I felt would be a little too uncomfortable for people if I said it out loud, if I said it too clearly. Um, poetry has always allowed me to process my feelings and express them in a way that um, still allowed me to have a little bit of uh, control over what the readers could perceive. And um, even in the way that I used my words in poetry, like 
I had, I felt like I always had a little bit of a control about uh, over um, what I wanted to say and I what and what I wanted people to hear. So, as people say, how a reader interprets your words uh, always changes according to the context that they are coming from, right? Uh, I think it has uh, poetry has a sense of control. But at the same time, it also has a lot of freedom for the reader and the writer, both. So in that ways, I think uh, poetry has been quite versatile. And uh, it has also allowed me to heal in a lot of ways from a lot of uh, things that I have gone through at different points in my life. For me, poetry today is, is, uh, is an understanding, you know, more than more than expression. For me, poetry is, is a way in understanding the deeper truth and realities of life. And when I, when I do that, um, then I also uh, come out with the most appropriate uh, and that too uh, effective manner in articulating it. And in the articulation, um, because very often the words are not enough, so I use uh, the language of the imagination. For me, that is poetry. You know, poetry is language of imagination, and and therefore people find it difficult to understand because it is not just uh, mundane uh, vocabulary. Uh, the diction has to do with imagination. <laughs> Lingy Ma chile dun sato. Tada nye sem dong lang lang de tordu chung. Tadung nye kang tiku sam. Zangi ki temba zuebar choko tu mindu. Tene bashumbe takze yene min. Nye samre susu semgi. Tabu Mare sympathy, Kilang. Ye Uri Shitang do Tatung ye come to good son. Ye make tongue the sangma, young shitu Tom. No marring on the sene, they do. Ye tatung come to good son. I'm going to read a poem from my book, Songs from a Distance. It's called, Just Shut Up. We are a flock of birds with the wings of golden color flapping freely in the sky. If you don't know how high we can soar, if you haven't seen our path across the open space, if you cannot fly with us against the raging wind, oh, self-righteous ones, just shut up. Need your rosary. Chant your mantra, but just shut up. We are a troop of stallions galloping across the open field, unchanged from trappings of the past. If you haven't seen us dashing up the mountain paths, if you haven't seen us marching forward to the future, if you cannot walk with us for the long battle, oh, self righteous ones, just shut up. Your world is no longer valid. Go to the temple, burn your borderlands, but just 
shut up. We are a gang of wild yaks, our hoofs pounding the city path, horns raised, hair flying in the wind. If you haven't seen us scaling the walls, if you cannot measure the size of our hearts, if you cannot match the pounding of our hoofs, oh, self-righteous ones, just shut up. The roads have since changed. Do your prostration. Appease your deities. But just shut up. Uh, so the poem that I'm going to recite today is uh, a special one to me. Uh, the, uh, I wrote the poem two years ago while I was traveling from Dharamshala to Shimla in a local bus. I remember, you know, suddenly waking up in the middle of a night, middle of the night, and uh, I had the time, mood, and space to actually go back into the school time memories. And that's when, you know, the poem uh, that I'm going to recite today, titled "In My Head." Uh, uh, was kind of like inspired uh, from uh, an incident that took place uh, when I was in school, the younger me. So I think the poem that I'm going to recite uh, basically gave voice to uh, the, the voiceless girl uh, back in school, and uh, which is why I think uh, uh, it quite answers as to what poetry means to me, right? Because um, for me, it allows uh, uh, spaces for you know um, voices uh, to give voices for the voiceless so um, it is in my head um, that I wrote two years ago uh, also uh, in my head uh, explores the you know uh, the, the social you know the, the stereotypes against um, uh, menstruation but um, we'll realize that I've never mentioned the word menstruation itself because uh, I wanted to sort of reinforce the idea that how we are all socially conditioned to not, you know, uh, uh, sort of use um, uh, terms like menstruation in the community. So I'm keeping it vague because I'm also a part of the social conditioning. So uh, this is in my head for all of you. In my head. Why do you do that? Disfigured polka dots on the back of my dress. I am just yesterday, said Elizabeth, the English professor in my head. Why do you do that? Uninvited guest, venting out furious and red on the bleeding woman's dress while she hops here and there, dancing on nightingale and the frog in my head. Why do you do that, handful breaths, mumbling into one another's ears of the bleeding woman's dress while she stood strong in blood and cramps, teaching you the sorry story of the singing bird, all in my head. So this is all in my head, now no longer in my head. Just don't know. I can write my random feelings just don't know if my words will reach you. I cherish your humility. Just don't know if my silence upsets you. I say I need a simple life. Just don't know how simplicity is a joy. I write poems, yes I do, to ease my mind. Just don't know if my words get prettier. I see my friends going jobless. Just don't know if it's all a mirage. I have feelings tumbling and turning. Just don't know if I'm sincere. I hear the music of lust engulf me. Just don't know if life is much more than that. I've plenty full sweeties caring for me. Just don't know how to return their kindness. I swallowed yesterday's grief. Just don't know if today's sun shines. Life in another soil was a different journey. 
just don't know how it feels to be back home. I often laugh while playing cards with my friends. Just don't know if our fate is gambled. I heard the world has become smaller. Just don't know if our hearts became bigger. I see a world filled with love. Just don't know whether not loving each other makes sense. I wish I were a songbird flying and sinking. Just don't know if you can hear my songs of freedom. I used to receive letters from my sister and home. Just don't know whether she still plays Gaga on internet. I feel everything changes with time. Just don't know if it heals the wounds. I remember the first night of my escape. Just don't know whether it was a final goodbye. The poem that I wanted to share today, uh, I wrote this in 2016 and uh, I think it is still quite relevant because this is something uh, what I talk about in my poetry uh, in this particular poem. Uh, I think this is something that has been going on for quite a while in our Tibetan community for a while now. And uh, 2016 in particular was a year that I would say was politically quite um, interesting. <laughs> Uh, at least for the exile uh, diaspora political um, climate, right? Uh, and during that time, I was uh, working for a Tibetan non-governmental organization and I was quite active with the Tibetan uh, political uh, movement. So right now my uh, work has changed, uh, shifted a little bit to more social justice. Social justice is also political, but like, you know, uh, in this context, I think I was more active in the political uh, freedom struggle. Um, so this poem, uh, it does not have a title. My poems generally do not have titles because I feel that titles also restrict people quite a bit. Uh, I think it makes the reader expect uh, sometimes the expectations are exactly what the writer wants them to expect but then uh, a lot of the times uh, I feel like the surprise the beauty the uh, kind of um, complexity that a uh, poem might be able to express without a title that could be taken away if I Give it a title. <clears throat> Teach me how to be Gesar's daughter, fierce, warrior-like, firm in the war for truth. True freedom you could kill for. No, I'm Gandhi's niece. But maybe not. Not so easy to change. Change your mind, believer in truth. No such thing in exile. Manufactured truths, manufactured goods. Who is who, enemy and protector, consumerist, communist, democratic bullshit. Don't talk to me like that. O mani pe me hum et gora, then spit poison while you sip on chai after. Gesar's daughter is Lukar's mongrel. So this one's called uh, Dreams of a Free Tibet. That was written in uh, 2011, September. 17th of September 2011 at 1533. So, dreams of a free Tibet. When finally comes the day welcoming a free Tibet, I shall put up a huge yak's tent in the grassland. Grazing the yaks every day and watching cranes fly, I shall only burn yaks dung to save oil and electricity. My tough yak's tent will keep me warm, dry and safe from hostile, unpredictable wind and wind snow and earthquakes. Its soft fur blanket dress hat 
and shoe will keep me warm for I will be crossing the high mountains from here every day. I will have fresh milk and cheese, curd, butter and meat to eat well. Why would I imprison myself behind Chinese built concrete walls? I will always let all yaks walk, jump and roll in the grasslands. For without them, the grassland would never be the same. I will leave all the rivers, trees and mountains as be as it is. For they will always keep our ecology safe and sound. Every morning I will go to the local monastery to pray. Without peace, world will never be in ease and peace. I shall always travel sound Sorry, I shall always uh, travel round safely on a uh, horse's horse, yak, or mule. We don't need a car to live a pure, simple, nomadic life. I shall respect all forms of life to survive and flourish. They say yaks give mil more milk when they are healthy. Should the Chinese come and dig up my garden for gold, I shall stuff mouthful of thampa if hunger led them to dig. In winter, I shall retreat back to my village and recite mantras quietly. In summer, I shall become a free nomad in the grasslands of Tibet. Why should the Nepalese army beat me with his bribe batons? For I will have left to my homeland Tibet without fear of Chinese. I will have plenty of time to serve the monks who will want to meditate. Other time, I shall sing the song of joy and love instead of sufferings. Many from around the world might want to pitch up a tent for a night or so. I shall, I shall certainly welcome a massive, massive rave if that's all what they want to do. A yak's tent Tent Cafe would work out well alongside Riverbank for visitors of mountain. Then I could have a wee jam sessions going on in the side under the lamps of butter. If there were thousands of Chinese military sitting around and doing nothing, I will yell at them to go and help the poor if they truly believed in communism. So one of my first expressions was um, Mm, uh, the line that says, um, I'm more of an Indian, except for my chinky Tibetan face. I think, uh, you know, this, this, uh, this is a kind of a uh, response to people who keep calling us Nepali or Chinese or, you know, I think the assertion of my identity for my, was for my, the first necessity when, when I go out of the Tibetan community. And from there it started, the entire uh, writing an expression of uh, of uh, one's identity and insistence on on identity and and culture. Um, uh, I've written number of poems, um, uh, mostly in English, and uh, I think um, uh, like how I have always adored uh, Robert Frost, uh, who gave wonderful lines for people around the world. Uh, just general simple truths of life. Um, I, when I write, I try to write, bring in more stories, in, not, not slogans, but, but stories. Include stories in, in the way what I am saying, what I'm trying to present. Um, poems like uh, Exile House or Space Bar, a proposal, or that poem uh, uh, where where I talk about uh, monsoon in Dharamshala, it's it's a poem uh, called uh, when it rains in Dharamshala. Uh, there are there are stories of how we live uh, with hope in the most unconducive of manner, um, and how how do we still you know put together uh, a great adventurous romantic idealist life. Uh, for me, uh, 
you, you know, in, in, in the poetry is both the life that you are living and also the aspiration you are, you are trying to hold up to. And uh, I have uh, found in my writing and also being in the Tibetan community very often that people are able to relate to some of the things that I am saying. And that I feel is, uh, is a little success that I have achieved as, as a writer. That you are able to articulate a larger uh, common uh, felt experience and, and a common aspiration of, of a large number of people uh, that you are part of. I think this is the this is the uh, uh, one of the roles of, of the writers that you speak for people, and uh, people feel represented uh, in your writing. Um, in in one of my poems uh, uh, called "Space Up Space Bar a Proposal," I am saying, uh, "Pull your ceiling halfway down, and you can create a mezzanine for me. Your walls open into cupboards." Is there an empty shelf for me? Let me grow in your garden with your roses and prickly pears. I'll sleep under your bed and watch TV in the mirror. Do you have an ear on your balcony? I am singing from your window. Open your door, let me in. I'm resting at your doorstep. Call me when you're awake. Hi, my name is Kuchung Sonam. I am a Tibetan writer and poet living here in Dharamsala. My name is Tedzi Pinzo and uh, my band name is Tempen. Uh, currently, I'm based here in Dharamsala, uh, pursuing my career as an actor and a writer. Uh, my name is Tedzi Shimzi. I was born and raised in Dharamsala. Uh, I studied English literature from uh, Madras Christian College and Jawaharlal Nehru University. So I'm now a Kipo. Nawa Kipu in Tibetan means the jolly one, the happy one, the easygoing one. Hi, uh, I'm Kisang. I'm the co-founder of Tokmo, a feminist resource group working with Tibetan and Himalayan communities in India and Nepal. Uh, my name is Tenzin Sundu. I'm a Tibetan writer and an activist living here in Dharamshala.